Praise the Lord, everybody. Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I know you came to rejoice in the Lord. I know you came on this Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. So I know you're still fired up from Resurrection Sunday because you were set free on Resurrection Sunday. And I know you're excited about today because today is Communion Sunday. So I know you're super excited. Go with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse number eight. And it says, finally, brothers and sisters, finally, Calvary Hill, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, guess what? Whatsoever is adorable. If you, if any is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Don't think about what's going on in the world. Don't think about all those things that want to make you depressed. Remember that Jesus was born and Jesus was sacrificed for you and I. Oh God, we give you glory. Oh God, we give you honor. Oh God, we think you are noble. Oh God, you are admirable. Oh God, you are worthy of all praise. We are thankful for this, a covenant Sunday, a Sunday in which we can commune and say to the world that we love you and we give you glory. We honor what you have done for us in the sacrifice of your life. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Calvary Hill present, Calvary Hill online. You have been called into worship. Come on, lift up holy hands if you want his glory to reside in this place. Let the weight of your glory, Lord, rest on us. Ha! Yes, God. Now let the glory of the Lord, yes, God. let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord say, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, rise somebody, us. let, let it the glory fall. of the Lord, let it rise, rise among let us, the let the praises of our King, let it rise, rise among us, let it rise.
Judah. And I came to praise him today. Come on, come on. Simple call and response. What I said, you say, all right? Come on, put your hands together. Say this. You're the lion of Judah.
the Lord, bless the Lord this morning. How many are happy to be in the house and know they are blessed, amen? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Calvary Hill Community Church. We are what? Spirit-led, Bible-fed, purpose-driven church that exists to see souls saved and lives change. You can have your seat for the moment. You can have your seat, especially if you've been worshiping real good. Amen. Amen. God is good today. We just come to welcome you, welcome you and welcome you. On today, we are glad that you are in the house. We are glad that you are online and that you made it one more time. Somebody say one more time. It is April. We have made it. God is good. Unfortunately, we know some folks that didn't make it, but God has kept us. God has never left us. God kept us on the living list. Amen. If this is your first time here or you haven't connected with us yet, we would love to connect with you. Our number is here to connect. Text welcome to 415-687-4667. Amen. Amen. You can pull it out right now. Connect with us. You'll get our information, what's happening in the house. And just connect. Just connect. Maybe you don't want to, you're not a member or what have you, but we have uh, awesome things going on here. You can come, you can visit, and we can connect with you. Amen. Amen. And as our pastor is not here today, let us keep him in prayer for all that he's doing and all that he does. Amen. By the time he gets to us, he's been on 17 planes. Amen. So let's keep him in prayer. And as we pray for him, let's pray today. Let's take a moment a prayer on Faith Sunday. Amen. We are blessed to have a Savior, a Lord, a King yes. Yes. that's supposed to rule over our lives, that's to reign, that's to move in our lives. And if we truly believe that Jesus is what he said he was and is, then we don't need doubt. We don't need worry. We don't need fear. We don't need trepidation. We just need him. We just need him. Father, we thank you today. We thank you that you are an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you went to Calvary. We thank you, God, that you didn't just die, but you rose again with all power yes. in your hands, you, oh God. Thank you, we thank you, God, that you left that power for us, God. Help that, that power so we can live, so we can move, so we can breathe, so we can grow, oh God. So we can be a better person day by day by day, oh God. So we can be a better parent, a better employee, a better manager, oh God. A better grandfather, grandmother, oh God. A better auntie or uncle, oh God. Just better, God, in you, Father. Better in who we are, oh God. Better in who we are. Who we, who we try to be, oh God, how we to love one another, God, our brother, our sister, oh God, our family, oh God. Thank you, God, that you fulfilled your part and help us to fulfill our part, oh God. Help us to live and give and love right. And at this moment, help us to give you a praise, God. Help us to give you glory, God. Help us to give you honor, God. You are an awesome God. You are a good God. Oh, but right now you're a mighty God. You're a mighty good God, oh God. And we praise, oh God, and we thank you, God, for all that you are to us. It's in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. How many know God is good? How many know God is good? You just don't think it. You know it. Help us to sing it today if you know he's good. Rejoice! 
your word. Hide us behind the cross that you may get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Let's give God one more hand of praise. Amen. We're turning to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Amen. We want to, first of all, start by giving God thanks and praises. Amen. For all that he has done. In honor to our pastor, amen, amen, the deacons and officers of the Lord's church, we give God the praise for another opportunity to be in worship one more time, hallelujah. First Corinthians, amen, to Pastor Bernstein, amen, our brother, amen, amen, to all the ministers in the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, and a few of the following verses. Say amen when you have it. Amen. amen. It said, Moreover, brethren, I declared unto you the gospel. Somebody say the gospel. Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse three said, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, and that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. And that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen above five hundred at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present. But some are fallen. Verse 7, after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And at last, he was seen of me also. Somebody say, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. On your way to your seat, look at a neighbor, say, neighbor, the preacher wants to talk about after the resurrection. Amen, amen. What, what happened after the resurrection? On last week, we came to church in our hats and our pastels. 
and we celebrated the risen Savior. Amen. We celebrated the Christ, the risen Savior, the Son of the living God. And God, in his infinite wisdom, he saw that the world was in a terrible state. He saw that uh, we had failed because of sin, because of Adam and Eve. Amen. Their fall from grace, God had to send a second Adam. Amen. In the Old Testament, he was concealed. But in the New Testament, he was revealed. And I'm so grateful that God has personalities. Amen. And he put himself in the personality of his own self and made himself his son. And is there anybody that thanks God for his grace? We are all standing and living on the grace of God. I come by here to tell you it is by grace that we even are able to make it to, amen, this sanctuary today. And I thank God for himself because without God, we would be nothing. The old saints used to say, without God, I would be nothing. I'd be just like a ship without a sail. Is there anybody that thanks God for himself? He's Elohim. He's Yahweh. He's Yah. He, he, he's the God of God. He's the king of kings. I used to hear the old preacher used to say, he's so tall, you can't go over. He's so wide, you can't go around him. He, he's so low, you can't go under him. He, he created the world. He made the sun to shine by day, the moon to glisten by night. Does anybody know God in here? Come by here to tell you, God, he tried with all the prophets. He tried with leaders like Moses. He tried with prophets like Isaiah, but that wasn't enough. So he had to come through 42 generations, amen, and wrap himself up in flesh, amen, and come and save humanity from sin. And I come by here to tell you, Christ didn't come through a perfect bloodline. But there were some liars in his bloodline there. There were some fornicators there. There were some adulterers. There were some prostitutes in his bloodline. Amen. And we expect for people to be perfect. Amen. But I come by here to tell you, nobody's perfect but him. And we live in a church scene today. In some places, the church got uh, more judges than the Supreme Court. Folk come to church. Amen. Like they ain't made no mistakes. Like... Amen. Folk come to church, amen, like when they get up in the morning, they breath don't stink. Do I have a witness in here? But we are all a part of God's church because of grace. And the Apostle Paul helps us this morning. And we know Paul wasn't true. We know Paul wasn't always saved. Paul was a persecutor of Christians. Paul was against the movement and the progress of the church. Anybody that talked about Jesus, Paul would persecute them and lock them up and kill them. Amen. And they would go through for the cause of Christ. But one day the apostle Paul had a conversion. He was knocked off of his high horse on the road of Damascus. Anybody know the story about Paul? And Amen. The Bible said a light shined down from heaven and said, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he got a name change. God changed his name from Saul to Paul. Is there anybody that can say, I'm so grateful that the Lord changed my name? When I was in the world, you could call me a whole bunch of stuff, but now I'm a saint. Now I'm on the winning team. As Pastor Bryant told us last week, now I'm a winner because I've decided to make Jesus. Jesus, my choice. Paul was a very astute man. He spoke seven different languages and he mastered them. And he, amen, was a great orator of the word of God. He was a Hebrew, glory to God. And he was also a Roman. And he had, he was a very astute man in his education. But Paul knew what it was like to be saved. 
he went to Ananias' house, and Ananias gave him, amen, encouragement to go into his relationship with God. Is there anybody in here that on your way to glory, you're grateful that somebody stopped and talked to you? You heard a word one day that changed the circumference of your life, and now, amen, you are living life in the bliss of salvation. And Paul said, he told the church at Corinth, don't get it twisted. Amen. This gospel, which I'm getting ready to tell you about, which I preached unto you, there's no other gospel. There's no gospel but the death, the burial, and resurrection. So Paul helps us with a couple of holy hints today. Number one, Paul tells us and the text shows us that Christ was seen after his resurrection. Somebody say he was seen. He was seen. Lord of God, I'm so grateful, uh, Mother Bryant, that he was seen. Paul said, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, I'm saying unto you, that the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye also received, wherein ye stand. Amen. We're alive. We're able to stand. We're able to have a concrete uh, evidence of our conviction because of the gospel. By which also, verse 2, you are saved. And if you keep in memory what I preach unto you. It's, it's nothing worse than coming to church and don't remember the sermon. We come to church, amen. And I know we love to holler and we love to hear the preacher squall and Almost bust his vein and all of that, amen. Then you get home and then, amen, your, your, your family asks you, well, what did he preach about? You say, I don't know, but he sure did preach. <laughs> Paul was telling them, don't forget what I've been preaching to you. He said, I delivered to you first that, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Amen. There, there, there are several other religions out there that have a narrative like the Bible narrative, but ours is the truth. Ours is the one, amen, that you can trace back. Every other man died, but he didn't get up. But our Christ rose, amen, after three days and three nights. Do I have a witness in here? And Paul said, amen, that he was buried and he rose again and that he was seen of Cephas. And I'm so grateful I wasn't back there when he rose, but today I'm still seeing him at work. We may, everybody in this building, we may not can see we, uh, we have saw the tangibleness of Christ, that we have touched him like the apostles. We've ate with him, we've sat with him, but how many know we see his handiworks? When you go to the doctor and you get a bad report, and after a few months, a few weeks, a few years, you find yourself healed, you've seen Jesus. Uh, is there anybody in here that can say, every time I wake up in the morning, I see him at work. Every time there's food on the table, I see him at work. Every time I'm able to drop my kid off and pick him up from school, every day I see God, I see Christ at work. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the fact that I'm sitting next to you shows that I can see him. Is there anybody that can say, if you're looking for a miracle, just look at me. If you're looking for somebody that God has been good to, just look at me. Make it personal. Say, I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him at work. People would think we're crazy because we come to church every Sunday, amen, during the month, and we serve this Christ who we've never seen. But I come by here to tell you, I may not have seen him in the physical, but I see him in the spirit. You can't get this twisted. This is not just a natural thing. It's supernatural. Some of the things that has happened in your life, you cannot explain it because it's a supernatural occurrence. And supernatural is when God puts his super with your natural and he makes your mess into a miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Paul said that he was seen. Look at your neighbor say he was seen after his resurrection. Not only was he seen, but number two, he gave us a story to tell. He gave us a story to tell. Now, if, if there was no resurrection of Jesus, 
then our lives and our fellowship would be in vain. Our story would be a complete failure. The resurrection is our fellowship. That's why, amen, we come to church on Sundays because we glorify God because we celebrate a risen Savior. And if you didn't close your Bibles, I want you to turn real quick, amen, to Luke 24. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to God. Luke tells us, amen, how Christ was risen from the dead. Luke 24, uh, looking at verse 1. He said, now upon the first day of the week, amen, if it's in there, if you ain't tore it out. Very early in the morning, they came unto the sculpture, bringing spices, which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Now, in Hebrew culture, amen, let me, let me point this out to you, amen, it's not Jewish culture, but it's Hebrew culture. Because anything with ish at the end of it is likened unto a thing, but it's not the thing. So the Bible was Hebrew. Those in that nationality wasn't Jewish, it was Hebrew. Do I have a witness in here? So in Hebrew culture, when somebody had died, amen, they didn't use embalming fluid to help get the stench and, you know, the little perfumes they use today in our funeral home and at Dugan's and Fouché where I work, amen. They didn't use all that stuff. They brought fray and mercancence so that the body wouldn't have an odor to it. Now, Evangelist Evans, I had a question to those that brought that stuff because they were out of order. How you going to bring something up for a dead person that said he was going to get up? Amen. And how many times do we come to church and we bring God our problems and we figure he can't fix them? They brought this stuff, amen, to, to a man, to a Christ that told them that he was going to get up. And when they went, amen, because of, my, because of the sake of time, I don't have time to read it all, but they went and he was not there. The Bible said that the stone was rolled away. Do I have a witness in here? The Bible said as they were, verse 5 said as they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. For he is risen as he said. Do I have a witness? See, we believe in the Bible. We believe in the resurrection. It, it's sad to hear people say that they're atheists and there are all this, these other things, and they don't believe in all this. And you ask them, well, what, what is the date today? And they say, well, the date is whatever, 2024. And uh, how many know the Bible is written, and history is written in the Anno uh, Domini, which is the full A.D., and that is based upon the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In history, you saw in history books, you see A.D., that means after death. Everything is based on after the death of Christ. So how could you not believe that our Savior is not the risen, resurrected Savior? Do I have a witness in here? And they say, I don't believe all that. But the Bible tells us in Luke 24 that he got up. And it would be crazy to go to a funeral and you go and look for the body. And you go to, you know how you get there an hour before? And everybody's hollering all over the casket. Amen. And you go and the body ain't there. So you can imagine how these disciples and followers felt when they went to the tomb and the body wasn't there. Somebody say, where is Jesus? And I come by here to tell you, do you know, many times in the Bible, Jesus said that he would rise from the dead. The Bible said he was seen of 500 people and they saw him and 500 folks saw him and some folks still don't believe. And if you would take them 500 people to court and they all said he saw him and one person said he didn't, then who's the crazy one? Jesus said many times that he would rise from the dead. And we just had, uh, we just had what you call Good Friday uh, on last week. And we had, amen, Resurrection Sunday. And can you, how can you get three days out of three days and three nights? Amen, that's another sermon. I'll have to t do that another time. But a lot of times we do things in church that's traditional, but it's not necessarily right. I told you a couple of weeks ago, amen, it may be the right thing, but is it the righteous thing? Amen. And so in actuality, we would actually call it Good Wednesday. Because Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
Amen. And he got up on Sunday. But he went through that whole Calvary experience from Wednesday all the way to Sunday. Do I have a witness in here? But, you know, we preach and we, we holler Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we have to keep it in context. And we have to give the people the right information. But what did Jesus do after he rose from the dead? A lot of people think about the resurrection and they leave it right, right there. But the Bible said we have Jesus dying on the Passover. And the Passover to Pentecost. In that 50 days, he appeared unto people a few times. There are several times recorded in scripture where Jesus appeared. One, he appeared to Mary at the grave site in John 20, 11 through 17. Number two, he came to some woman thereafter in uh, Matthew 28, 1 through 20. To his disciples on the road of Emmaus in Luke 24, 13 through 34. He came to Simon Peter in Luke 24, 34. He came to his disciples in Jerusalem without Thomas in John 20, 19 through 25. He came to the disciples a week later with Thomas. Amen. And Thomas is a whole nother sermon. Don't talk about doubting Thomas, amen, because we've all doubted him in some way. Amen. We, 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 we all didn't do right and handle our situation with Christ right. We, we all were Thomas one day. But thank God for grace. And then number seven, he came to the disciples while they were on a boat fishing in John 21, 1 through 12. And these are seven appearances that Jesus came uh, after his resurrection. Isn't it amazing to know that he's always using the number seven? He created the world in how many days? Seven days. He appeared to the disciples seven times after his resurrection. And how many know when he shed his blood, it, it is actually recorded in scripture that he recorded, he, he shed his blood seven times. Seven occurrences in the Bible where he shed his blood. And so a lot of times, we preach the seven last sayings of Christ. And there are also seven things that the dying thief said on the cross as well. And we don't really talk about that, amen. We need to do a seven things that the thief said next time, amen. But the Bible said that he gave us a story to tell. His death, his burial, and his resurrection is all we need to be a witness to this dying world. I come by here to tell you Buddha died, but he didn't get up. Several Muhammads have died, but they didn't get up. Confucius died, but he didn't get up. Pharaoh died, but he didn't get up. Our Savior is the one who rose from the dead. Not only was he seen, not only did he give us a story to tell, but my next point is he had a place of security. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. You can read this in your own time, verses 8 through 10. But when he rose, the Bible said that he went up to heaven. And we see that in the book of Ephesians. We must realize that there is only one way to heaven, and that is through Christ. And the preachers used to preach a lot about going to heaven. But now we don't hear sermons that tell you you got to live right in order to get there. You got to stop lying and sneaking and conniving and doing stuff behind your back if you want to go to heaven. Do I have a witness in here? Because everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. But Jesus made us and he gave us a straight way to get to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, the Bible said in verse 9 of Ephesians 4, Jesus died and he was buried and he rose again. Verse 10 said, so Jesus rose from the dead and he went to heaven, but then he came down and appeared seven times to his disciples. But the question is often asked, why did he go to heaven? And a lot of people don't mention this, but one thing we must understand is that the blood of Jesus was not just shed on Calvary's cross. Is there anybody here that thanks God that the blood has consistency? That the blood works through all ages. The blood works through all generations. We are here right now because of the blood. I'm born again. I'm free from sin. Look at your neighbor. Tell them because of the blood. His blood gave us security. 
Jesus had somewhere to go. And those that were, that didn't have, in the Bible, they had what you call a waiting place. Because people could not ascend until he ascended. And they all waited in Abraham's bosom. And they couldn't ascend until he went up. And how many know until he went up on the cross, we couldn't be where we are today. So what happened in the spiritual, it also happened in the natural. Look at somebody, tell them what's happening in the spiritual is getting ready to happen for you in the natural. God is blessing in the spirit and you're getting ready to see it show up in the natural. Do I have a witness in here? So when he went up, everybody went up. And we all now have a place of security because heaven is our goal. Anybody that can testify today that heaven is your goal. Heaven is my aim. Heaven is my goal. Amen. I want to go, amen, drink in that land flowing with milk and honey. I want to go and see the walls of Jasper. I want to go and see the golden floors. I want to go, amen, and be up there with the angels in heaven, amen. We cry when we stay in church an hour and a half over time. But how many know all the angels in heaven do is bow and say, Hosanna, and holy, holy art thou, Lord God Almighty. The angels in heaven, they worship all day. And some of us don't even want to pray or read our Bible during the week. And how many know real worship always involves a sacrifice? If there's no bloodshed, there's no real worship. That's what kills me about this new theology today. We got people telling us that heaven is on earth. How many know we struggling down here on earth? This ain't no heaven. Heaven, you ain't got to worry about PG&E and light bills and gas bills and cable bills and car notes and car insurance. There, there's none of that. On, you ain't got no worries over there. Down here, we robbing Peter to pay Paul and we using John's paycheck. Do I have a witness? But when I get to heaven, Sister Janet, I ain't got no more worries. No more headaches, no more heartaches over there in heaven. And when there's true worship, I said earlier that there's no true worship unless a sacrifice is involved. And we have people today, amen, that want to claim to be Hebrew and Israelites and all this stuff, amen. And they tell us what we can eat and what we can't eat, amen. But Christ died for all of that. Leave me and my chitlins and my, my hog mog and my pork chops alone. Leave my pig feet alone. Because he died for all of that. And ain't nobody in here going to go get a lamb or a goat or a bull and cut the head and bring Pastor Brian the blood and you offer him some blood and you we ain't got time for all that. Jesus said, I was the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. He was that lamb. He took our play. We should have been on that cross. It wasn't the nails that held him to the cross, but it was my sins and your sins that held his hands and his nails to the cross. He gave us a place of security. But the last thing that he did, Deacon Jenkins, he shed his blood. Hallelujah. His blood was shed during and after the resurrection. Now here, what we're reading here, the Bible says in Ephesians 8, 1 through 5, the Bible says that Israel was given a tabernacle by God. And this, he gave them this tabernacle to worship him. And they had to go into this tabernacle, and whenever they went into the tabernacle to worship, they had to take blood. They had to take a sacrifice. And that's why it kills me today how, amen, they had to do a whole bunch. You couldn't go to the temple, amen, uh, like we were sitting here today when they were saying he's a mighty good God. Some of y'all was just so calm and cool and collective, like you were sitting in the movie theater. And we was talking about, we was, Sister Marilyn, Minister West was singing about a good God. Amen. But you couldn't go into the temple Unless you entered into his gates with thanksgiving. 
even before you entered into the gate, you had to be thankful. And then when you entered into the courts, you had to go in the courts with praise. You couldn't be quiet when you went into a Hebrew Jewish temple. You had to come in there with a made up mind to praise God. Who wouldn't praise a savior like ours? Who took all that suffering anguish just for you and just for me. They pierced him in his side. They beat him. And when the, the things that they whipped him with, amen, it was like a ball. And that ball had, uh, had, had needles at the end of the ball. And they stripped him in the back. All for you and all for me. And we claim when the sermon, we, we get mad when the sermon go over an allotted time. <laughs> or when we five minutes past the benediction. But we say we want to go to heaven. Folk that complain like that don't want to go to heaven. Because heaven is all day. That's why he said, give us this day. Where well, every day is the Sabbath. But whenever they went into the tabernacle, they had to go in with a blood sacrifice. They had different offers that they offered blood on. And there was a, no forgiveness without blood. There was no forgiveness without a sacrifice of blood. But this was just the pattern in the Old Testament and a shadow of a heavenly thing. And do you know that in the Bible there's tabernacles too? The Bible talks about it a lot in the book of Revelation. So when Jesus rolls the stone away, when the stone was rolled away and he rose from the dead, he went up there to the tabernacle. And what he did was, let's look at Hebrews 9 and 11. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 11, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. And that is to say, not of this building. But this verse shows us that Jesus Christ was the high priest, not a Levitical priest because, amen, the priests were of the Levi tribe, but he was of the tribe of Judah, which represents praise. And there's been a change, and it's called the New Testament. Amen, amen. We're not in the old law anymore, but we're under grace now. Amen. It, 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 it works in tangent together. It means that we don't forget the old. Because some of the things in the Old Testament we still glean from. Amen. We still live from. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to destroy it, but through me it might be fulfilled. Haven't we read that in the word? We're at the start of a new dispensation. But by greater and more a, a perfect tabernacle. That's what he wanted to build. A tabernacle not made with hands is to say, not of this building. And all Paul was saying is, not this earthly tabernacle, but the one up there in heaven. And did you know that there was a tabernacle in heaven? And that symbolizes, glory to God, that heaven is a place where God's spirit dwells. And verse 12 said, neither by the blood of goats nor calves but by his own blood that he entered once into the holy place having obtained the eternal redemption for us we are redeemed because glory to god of what he went through we are alive because of his blood shed but i wish i had time to break this all down but there's a story about a leper that came from leviticus the 14th chapter and every time that a leper, you know, leprosy was a disease that separated you from society. Amen. If you had leprosy, they didn't want you to eat after nobody. You couldn't go to work. Amen. You couldn't go to church. You couldn't go to school. You couldn't be around your family. But they ostracized and put you aside in your own little corner. But there was a process that was mentioned in Leviticus 14 that helps us understand the blood shedding of Christ. The Bible said in Leviticus 14 that the priest had to dip his finger in oil. And after the application of blood, the priest sprinkled the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And he the leopard was able to be restored. And then the priest applied the rest of the oil to the right ear and to the right thumb. And they had a whole procedure. And then the priest shall command uh, to take the leopard and he would be cleansed and he would use two birds. 
And with these two birds, he would take one bird. Amen. And he would chop off the head and he would run it underwater and he would use that blood to apply it to the sick leper. And the priest would take, glory to God, that blood. Amen. And he would make a little concoction and he would apply it to that leopard so that the leopard could be healed. And so the Bible said in Leviticus 14, the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. And as for the living bird, he shall take it and the satyr wood and the scarlet and the hyssop, and he shall dip them in the living bird. And the blood, uh, glory to God, of the living bird, glory to God, shall be dipped in, in the blood of the dead bird. And that dead bird was used, amen, and this was a ritual that they did to cleanse leopards. And I come by here to tell you, we were all like those leopards. We all were spotted and we all were unclean because of the penalty of sin. But watch what happens now. As for the living bird, he will take it and the satyr wood, which represents the cross, and the scarlet that represents his suffering. And the hyssop that represents our faith. And he will dip them in the blood of the bird that was killed. And as for the living bird, he shall take it and the satyr wood and the scarlet and the hyssop. And he shall dip them and the living bird, he shall dip him in the blood. And what they did was they took that living bird and after he dipped it in the blood, he would take that living bird and he would release it into the air. And when he would release that bird into the air, that bird would fly all over the camp. And everybody who was under that region would get shattered with that blood and that oil and that water. Do I have a witness in here? And that's the same thing that happened to Jesus. The Bible said when Jesus went up to be with his father, after the resurrection, Jesus offered that blood. And Deacon Strong, I had a conversation with the Holy Ghost. Do I have a witness here? And I asked the Holy Spirit, I wondered what happened to all that blood that Jesus shed during his Calvary experience. And Elder Sanders, the Holy Spirit dropped something in my heart. He said that an angel collected all that blood. When Jesus, when they put the crown of thorns on his head, the Bible said blood gushed out of his head. And Bible said when they whipped him and beat him all night long, that blood was shed everywhere. The Bible said as he carried that old rugged cross, that blood was shed during him, his process of carrying the cross. And I asked the Holy Spirit, Pastor Bernstein, what happened to that blood? And the Holy Ghost told me that an angel of the Lord, they came and collected that blood. Hallelujah. And Lady Hall, when they collected that blood, they got all the blood together. And Jesus, amen, and they gave it back to the Savior. And the Savior took that blood and he offered it to his daddy. And he said, Daddy, this is the payment and this is the blood shed for all the sins of the world. And so every time we make a mistake, every time we mess up, every time we lie and we sin and we cheat, God doesn't stone us to death. But what God does, he looks at that blood that his son offered. Do I have a witness in here that can say, I'm so grateful that God looks at the blood. Every time I mess up, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God, he looks at that blood. You are out there on drugs. Some of us were out there doing all manner of things. But I'm so grateful that God looked at his son's blood that was shed in Calvary's experience. And God said, I look at that blood. Every time my children mess up, Jesus.
Jesus reminds God, Daddy, here's my blood. We should have been sent to hell a long time ago. But is there anybody that's grateful today that God looks at the blood that was shed by his son? And when his son died, the Holy Spirit told me that an angel went, Sister Juanita, and picked up all that blood. And I asked God, I said, God, well, what angel was it? Was it Gabriel, the archangel? Was it Michael, the warring angel? Was it a cherubim? Was it a seraphim? But the Bible said that Jesus offered that blood and an angel of the Lord took that blood and they sprinkled the blood all over the world and that blood was sprinkled in Jerusalem that blood was sprinkled in Australia that blood was sprinkled in Rome that blood was sprinkled in San Francisco that blood was sprinkled all in Oakland and we are recipients of that blood sacrifice look at a neighbor and say neighbor we're still here because of the blood and that's why the hymn writer said I know it was the blood that was shed for me one day when I was lost he died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me is there anybody here that can say the blood came streaming down for you and me there is a fountain that's filled with blood that's drawn from Emmanuel's vein is there any witnesses here that can say I thank God for his precious blood when they whipped him all night long that blood was shed when they beat him that blood was shed and he stayed there three days and three nights but it was early somebody ought to praise him that he got up and he didn't leave us after his resurrection he didn't leave us by ourselves but he sent us his blood and then when he ascended the Holy Ghost descended and is there anybody in here that can say I thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost won't the Holy Ghost won't he lead you won't he guide you you ought to look at your neighbor and say neighbor I thank God for the Holy Ghost is there anybody here that can say I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm shown up feel with the Holy Ghost every now and then while I'm driving my car I think about the goodness of Jesus and I have to pull over because the Holy Ghost takes over you want to ask somebody neighbor have ye been since you believe have you been filled with the precious Holy Ghost and that's why he said in Acts 1 and 8 and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you I don't know about you but I thank God that Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost he released his Holy Spirit and every now and then he gets all in my hands every now and then he leads me and guides me and I thank God that I'm saved and I'm sanctified show not filled with the Holy Ghost won't he walk with you won't he talk with you won't he hold you in the midnight hour I'm so grateful that he didn't leave me comfortless after 
say is resurrection but when the, he ascended he dropped down the Holy Ghost and all you gotta do is say Holy Spirit come into my life I give you the permission to lead me and guide me you ought to run to somebody and say neighbor do you have the Holy Ghost does he live inside you does he walk with you does he lead you yeah yeah, I got it, I got it. You ought to wave your hand if you know you got it. You ought to shout for joy if you know that the blood, the blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. Is there anybody here that can say I'm covered because of the blood? Put your arm around somebody. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them and say, Nathan, I'm here because of the blood. What can wash away all of my sins? Nothing, nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again because of the blood? Shake somebody's hand. Say, I've been washed. I've been washed. I've been washed. I've been washed, yeah, 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 because of the blood, if you know about the blood, you ought to give God some praise, you ought to give God some glory, you ought to clean yourself, say I've been washed, he sanctified my soul, he washed and made me whole, because of the blood because of the blood see it see it yeah yeah I just got one question I just got one question can you just lift your hands up and can you worship God cause he rose he sent his son can you tell him thank you can you tell him thank you if you know you're redeemed if you know you've been washed can you send up a shout a shout of victory we got the victory on the count of three I want us to celebrate Jesus one, two, three. Come on and praise him. Come on and give him glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I'm washed. I'm cleansed. I'm justified. I'm saved. I'm washed. I'm cleansed. Because, because of the blood. Yeah. Somebody say, because of the blood. I can shout now because of the blood. If you got sickness in your body, say, I curse that sickness. It's covered. It's covered under the blood. If you got pain in your body, you ought to lay hands on that spot and say, I'm healed. My knees are healed. My back is healed. My cancer is healed. My diabetes is healed. My pain is healed. My heartaches are healed. Shake a neighbor, say neighbor. Because, 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 because of the blood. Yeah, yeah. Because of the blood. Because of the blood. Thank you. 
But one thing I know I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb One thing I know Yeah, yeah You ought to testify I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb Yeah Another thing I know, he died and he rose again. Oh, yes, he did. One thing I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He died and he rose again. Yeah. I've been... Praise Him. Praise Him. Bask in His Spirit. Let His Spirit engulf you. anybody that don't understand we don't quench the spirit here we are a spirit field and when the spirit of God is moving in the room I am redeemed yes bought with a price Jesus has changed my whole life. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, if anybody ask you just who, who I am, you know what you can do for me? You ought to tell them that I am, I'm redeemed. Change my my whole life, yeah. If anybody asks you, if anybody, yeah, ask you just who, you ought to tell them. Now, we come to the part of where, if you have not accepted the blood of Jesus, it was preached that each and every one of us can tell you that Jesus lives in us. If it's anyone here that won't be covered by that blood, is it, if it's anyone here that desires for their sins to be saved, 
if it's anybody right here, right now. All right, amen. Amen. Look here, we are just like those angels in heaven. Come on, let's give a hand clap up, bro. Come on, is there one more? Come on, this is your time. Amen. And I want you to know, you don't have to walk down here. We're going to have our ministers and intercessors. You can come at the church. You can get prayer. You can accept God. Can we give this young lady a welcoming applause and let her know that we want to welcome her into our family. Amen. Amen. Now, we good. Now I have to do something, and I'm gonna be quick about it. Is this? We got a master's level PhD in the blood of Christ. He broke it down. He got it from the top, came through him to give it to us. Can we give the man of God a, a applause for how God used him today? Now we come to the part of where we come to the part where we've been worshiping him, we've been shouting, but now we come to the part of worship by what? Giving. At Calvary Hill, we love what? A cheerful giver. See, because see, the Bible tells us is that we praise God how we give to God. Somebody say, you've been shouting in church all morning long, and then you go up there and drop two pennies in the plate. I'm just saying now. But God loves what you give from your heart. So can everyone please stand and hold up their offering, please? First of all, God, we just want to thank for your spirit being in this house, Father God. We just want to say we love you, we love you, we love you. Bless this offering so it can be magnified for the glory, Father God. We ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're in the hands of the Urshas. Welcome to Calvary Hill Community Church where Reverend Dr. Joseph Bryan Jr. is our senior pastor. Calvary Hill is a spirit-led, fed purpose-driven church that exists to see souls change. A new devotional Bible study has begun. The God I never knew. Those that follow us on Version Bible app should have already gotten a notification to join the study. If you would like to join the study, see a media team member in the back after the service or email us at info at calvaryhillsf.com. Ladies, Mark your calendar. The Sisterhood Ministry pre-Valentine, pre-Mother's Day brunch on Sunday, May the 11th at 11 a.m. The theme, who can find a virtuous woman? Proverbs 31 and 30. Guest speaker will be Lady D. Hillman of Chicago Christian Fellowship. We need a head count for the brunch. So ladies, please scan your card on the flower or click on the link for our website or uh, mobile app. Have you purchased your tickets yet? Get your tickets today for our 70th church anniversary banquet that will be held Saturday, October the 12th 
at 6 p.m. at South San Francisco. $70 for adult, $25 for children ages 5 to 12 years old. Tickets are available in the boardwalk, or you can purchase them through Eventbrite by scanning the code on the flyer or clicking on the link on the website. VIP Bible study. Now that is for our season saints, but if you got one of those season spirits, you are invited to attend also. Every Wednesday, you are invited to join Wild Word on Wednesday, 7 o'clock on YouTube and Facebook Live, or on our Zoom, 6.30 for prayer. Join us on Wednesday night. Sign up for our Sunday school classes. You cannot get a closer relationship with God by not studying his word. If you want to get closer to God, get closer to his word. And we expect, we expect every member in at least one study. We got them for men, children. We got them for ladies. So please get that close walk with Jesus. Amen. We just want to make sure that everyone has their communion cup. If you do not have yours, please raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring you your communion. According to Matthew, the 26th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Father God, we come and we give you glory and honor and we ask, Lord Jesus, if there's any thing that is separating us from your love we ask that you cover it with your blood and we ask for forgiveness of that sin whether that be a sin of omission or commission or whether that be a sin where we just willingly willingly want to sin against you father god we just ask that you're covered with your blood we thank you lord jesus that today we are going to covenant with one another we are going to covenant with you and we are going to say to the world that we believe in the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for us for the remission of our sins we pray it all in Jesus name and for Christ's sake we pray amen if you have your cup and we'd like for you to turn it to the bread side of your cup If you look at the bread and you look at it and you feel it, you see how hard it is. But you know what? There is no yeast or leaven in this, which would imply sin. And so we're grateful that God's blood was without, that Jesus' blood 
covered it all and that it was without sin. So as you partake of this, let's do it together. And they all ate together. We ask that you flip it up and reveal to yourself the wine or the juice here that is in representation of the blood that Jesus shed for you. And it didn't just shed for your yesterday. It didn't just shed for your today. But guess what? It's shed for your tomorrow. That anything that you might separate yourself from God, this blood shed for you is covered. Let us all drink together. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Say, I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost, he died. He died upon the cross. I know it was. Amen. If you're able, could you please stand? Just let your neighbor know that it truly was the blood. Amen. Amen. Father God, let us keep in our heart that message that we heard today. Allow us to be covered in your blood, Father God. Let you touch our lives each and every day. And Father God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, keep your loving arms around us. Lead us and guide us. We ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.